this uh, page list um, was prepared by Mike based on the criteria that we had utilized. Uh, and there will be further discussion about that uh, right after this. And the pages following this analysis are a list compiling of our 42 uh, roads that Robin has compiled, that, that those 42 roads that generate the most response when we have bad weather, you know that these 42 roads, depending on where the, the rain or the weather is, will need assistance. Right, and some of them paving wouldn't be a solution because it's the river, you know, the common. But it's just, yes. that's, that's one of the criteria. If you look across there, you look at the project, the right of way, the parcels, uh, all of those on, on Mike's list, those criteria are listed all across the top, and one of which is that eight-year maintenance cost. And uh, if you look at the 42 and you don't see them in here, there are justifications and reasons based on these eight criteria, what those 42 indicate is that they're, they're broken down uh, into uh, regions of the county, you'll be able to determine where those are and to see the correlation between them. So Mike, if you'll start going over your analysis on this about the projects of the way of the Can I ask a question before you go is that we've had several options here on the you know, we've gotten down, I think, four. How does that, how do you come up with this list when we've got all these different options? Is that a combination of the people? That, the list that you have, or those lists, four options. Various, various requests that were made to the engineering department by commissioners that all were associated with this analysis. This analysis is the raw uh, data compiled by Mike. Those four lists are requests made by Mike, I mean made to Mike by various commissions. That yeah, they're correct. Good. Good we haven't got to know those lists yet. <coughs> this is actually Mike's list that you say that he's been working on. We yes. haven't got it. We haven't got it. Yeah. We're going there though this afternoon. We, to a certain extent, yeah. we've got a, uh, I got a spreadsheet that we, Mr. Preacher tasked me with to look back at all six previous plots, figure out which roads had been on, on previous plots that may not have gotten done, uh, which roads you know, had uh, people brought in petitions to get paid uh, that possibly has not gotten done. And that generated a list of 65 roads, uh, of which all 65 are not on this list. Uh, because they're, uh, you know, for one reason or another, just, uh, you know, I, this is basically like my top 35, 40, uh, you know, road list. Uh, uh, when, you, when you start looking, looking across there, uh, what is the project gonna be? Is it gonna be a paving project? Is it gonna be a bridge project? going to be a widening project. Uh, right of way. Do we have the right of way on the road? Those are big things that uh, can cost a lot of money at the, uh, you know, right at the onset before we ever get started on the road and can prevent some significant delays. If we have to, if we have to go in and hire a surveyor uh, to, to develop uh, right of way deeds on roads, those are uh, typically the surveyors will run us about 3% uh, of whatever the construction is, and then the engineers will run us another 4% on that. So, so right away, right off the hand, right off the bat is a, is a big cost for us. Uh, parcels, how many parcels does this, uh, if it's a dirt road, how many parcels does it service? Uh, how many parcels you know, have access to that road? Uh, 
AADT, that is your average annual daily traffic. Okay? Uh, Boring Pond Road, uh, 465 cars a day. That's probably our highest uh, dirt road traffic counts that we see. Uh, uh, and then you, I mean, then you can you come on down and you'll see some that are, you know, some that are much less. Uh, but in, again, you got to look at look at where they are, how what they service, and things like that. Bevel Creek Bridge. When we did the traffic count there, there were 73 vehicles a day that go across the Bevel Creek Bridge. Uh, but one reason that, that that is so low is because you know that dead end you know, kind of goes into a dirt road. But there's a school bus that has to bypass or take a detour around the Bevel Creek Bridge because uh, of the condition of the Bevel Creek Bridge. Uh, is it a bus route? Uh, what, you know, do buses go go down this road? Uh, future, uh, is it where where does it fit on the county's future growth as far as water and sewer, uh, as far as zoning? Uh, where does it fit into the 2030 comp plan? How does that fit in? There? Uh, what is its connector status? Does it provide a connection between two other paved roads? Does it provide connection from a subdivision to a paved road? Uh, then what is our uh, uh, what is our maintenance cost? We looked at an eight-year maintenance cost on these roads, and the numbers that you see here do not include grading. These are just work orders that Robin has generated for these roads uh, over the past eight years. Hey, so uh, I'm saying correct. Eight-year maintenance does not include grading. That this this does not include grading. This would be washed out drive, washed, washed off out roads. roads, having to clean out ditches, uh, having to, uh, you know, do drainage structure improvements, different things like that. Because the uh, the reason why I didn't put the grading cost in there is because the grading cost it cost us uh, the same, uh, a little over two thousand dollars a mile to whether we're grading Boring Pond or whether we're grading uh, Madison Heights. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it's gonna cost us that same same amount of money. Uh, but it, but what it does what it does change where where these numbers come in is you know, like Robert said, where where we have in our biggest uh, our biggest cost, where we're spending a lot of money. So it's two thousand dollars a mile. A little over two thousand dollars a mile annual. per annual. 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 And then my last column is, what is my estimated construction cost? Uh, some of these, some of these roads, when you get down, uh, get down in the bottom, uh, are uh, just say from uh, from Bent Creek Circle uh, on down through uh, the Deerfield Subdivision, Bent Creek Circle through uh, uh, Deerfield Subdivision. Those projects right there are projects that that the county can do in-house with our construction crew. And so that's why you'll see those numbers are a little less than you see up in the top because those numbers are not the ones that we would have to uh, be looking to hire contractors for. Uh, Explain what the crew in-house would do. That crew works, public works. How many people are on the crew? They do what? What they what they can do is all right, like Bent Creek Circle, uh, they would go into they would go in there. Uh, they can prepare the drainage, they can prepare the base, they can get everything ready to go except for pave the road. And then, if you remember correctly, uh, back last year we uh, put out an RFP for paving these roads. That's what we did down at. Uh, uh, off of Glen Road, that subdivision down there, the Baywood subdivision. That's what we're doing on uh, on Payton this week, uh, and you know, of course, moving to Dodd next week. So those are those are ones that uh, those are easy roads that we can do in house. Uh, they have very limited clearing that we have to do because they already have 60 foot of right of way because most of them are dirt road subdivisions. 
Uh, we can go in, we don't have to relocate utilities a lot of times. Sometimes you'll see uh, where the telephone company has put their telephone line down the middle of the road, trench down the middle of the road. But all that is is you know taken from there and put it up on the existing poles that are there. Uh, but but we're able to do these roads, uh, you know, a lot faster, a lot quicker, and with a lot less cost than what we're uh, than what we would have to hire a contractor to do it for. Just because we've got the, the manpower and the equipment to do it in house. But we can't pay. We don't have a paving machine. I don't want to get into the don't want to get into paving business. Uh, but but we, we that, that's the only thing that we can't do. And there, that's not uh, the paving construction crew is not designed to do all these type That's right. Yeah, they, they, uh, we uh, There's certain ones like they do. When uh, back a couple of years ago, we did the first phase of Boring Pond Road with our construction crew. I will I will never put our construction crew on on a road that big again. It was, it was just, it was too much. Uh, they did it, they did a fantastic job doing it, but it's just, it was, it was too much for them to do uh, because in order to be committed to a two and a half mile road project, they need to be committed to being there every day. Robin has things that come up. That was during the time to, that we had the flooding issues uh, in 2009 and they didn't see that road for a month. And, but, but that whole time that that road is sitting there for a month, I mean, this, this crew is flexible to do things uh, on, road, on road building, but they're also flexible to go do things for public works. I just uh, didn't want the commission to get the idea that we could eliminate the need for any uh, projects from start to finish. There, there are contractors by having this crew it's just not designed. And roads that have have a lot of complex drainage, uh, Riverside Road, for for example, I, I couldn't put my guys on Riverside because uh, because of the complex drainage issues we're going to have there. Uh, so, uh, th I mean, those are those are issues that we just we can't we can't deal with. All right. Any questions on these projects? All right. Um, any questions or comments, Robert, you have on this 42?